Hey guys, it's Metro here. I'm uh, about to do another uh, uh, Metro Made video here. This is more about uh, finishing. This is a topic that uh, we don't really talk about very much. Um, but I'm just going to go through some of the uh, my favorite tools to finish things. Um, you know, I mean, you talk about using a laser cutter and uh, all this other stuff to, to generate uh, the, the form of a slingshot. Um, but really, once you get it down to um, the general shape you want after using some power tools or heavy sanding or that kind of thing, um, you really want to make it so it's a really, really smooth product in the end so that it's a nice, you know, a nice comfortable hold. You don't have any sharp edges. Um, and just to give it that nice professional look. Um, so this is the uh, Scarlet Beetle. It's made from a lot of laminated uh, layers of um, Padauk and Purple Heart and Walnut and uh, some Cherry Spacers and some other stuff um, in the middle. This is a top slot design and I used uh, three layers of veneer uh, to make that slot perfectly even and then uh, an eighth inch drill bit to, uh, to get that uh, last bit of uh, top slot so that you can the, the rubber has a place to expand um, <clears throat> it's a PFS design. Um, it's the slim waisted uh, adaptation, um, and it's basically kind of laminated as one block and then sanded it away and that kind of stuff. So uh, I'm just gonna go through what I use to finish uh, and shape things. So once I've done rough shaping um, material uh, down to what I kind of want, like especially the scallops and um, <clears throat> this palm spool here, because the palm spool is um, quite sculpted and it needs to be very smooth. And then um, because of the, the laminations, um, any mistakes you make are going to be very visible because this egg shape is no longer going to be egg shaped if you don't get it right. So what um, I tend to use are what you see in front of me. These are all kind of nail file things. They're actually for um, nail art and uh, aesthetics and that kind of stuff. So these are all purchased online uh, off eBay for relatively inexpensive. They're about, um, they range between uh, 15 cents to all the way to about 50 cents a piece. Um, but they last quite a long time because they're meant for uh, nails and then nails are actually harder than wood. <clears throat> so it depends what you use them for. So let's go through uh, these three here. These three are generally the same kind of uh, the grit is the same, so it's 100 on one side and 180 on the other. Um, I, I kind of use them interchangeably. If one gets side, gets full up, and then I can switch to the other side. I don't really notice a difference between them. But um, these are uh, heavy-duty ones that I take off uh, the large portion of the edges uh, and, the, and the nicks and scratches that I use that come up using power tools. Um, and these are... Um, they are uh, a cardboard in the middle, I believe, and then it's back with a really, really thin piece of foam um, followed by uh, the sandpaper. The sandpaper is really nice. It doesn't get clogged up too much because it's 100 grit. Uh, the best thing about these is because they're rigid. They're, they're semi-rigid. I mean, they're a little flexible here and there. So you can really give yourself um, that leverage, especially when you're doing these palm swells because the palm swells, I tend to um, clamp that to a table or a vise or something like that and actually go back and forth, kind of like a mini rasp, but it uh, it doesn't mar it because it's uh, it's foam backed and you're going with the grain of the material. Um, <clears throat> so um, these ones I just got in new, uh, I, I saw there's a couple different shapes of these as you can see, um, but really it's, it, they're being so cheap, you buy them like 50 at a time and then they're only like 15 cents or f like a quarter each uh, and they last, you know, a couple slingshots. So, you know, it's really worth the investment of having a bunch of these on, in, on, uh, on your rack. Um, so what, uh, this curved one I found was like, it's probably going to do the best because you can actually grab it from here and then move your way over, uh, to get the, the right amount of sandpaper to be used. So you have this whole kind of range, uh, to be used that way. Um, and then this shape is really nice because you can get into the corners going this way. Um, and the same thing with this one. So if you're getting into those tight corners, that kind of way. Um, uh, and this one is just, it's a really nice, uh, having a nice square, uh, thing if you just if you're doing like an edge or something like that it's really nice to have that right angle. Um, so these ones are, are are really great for massing and getting rid of the bulk material uh, after you've done the rough shaping. So um, once you've done that, if you're getting more hard uh, hard to reach areas, there's these small, small ones. Again, this is going to be 100 and 180 on the other side. Um, these are going to be smaller just n smaller nail files, except these ones are cardboard backed. <clears throat> and uh, they aren't really washable. They say they're washable, but, you know, they get soft after a while. These ones are definitely washable. Um, for some reason, I think the cardboard on the inside um, is more resilient to water. So if it gets clogged up too much, you can't just tap them on the side of your uh, your bench, uh, but you can wash them with water, and uh, they'll get rid of the, the dust and you continue working. 
Uh, once the kind of the general shaping is done, um, especially for these areas, so you can see like that egg shape, it's really um, once you get it down and you can you can file it back and forth, back and forth, and kind of go up and down here. Um, it helps to uh, to to see the the mass come through. And once that's done, I switch over to uh, foam blocks. This is a uh, 100 grit sanding foam block. Again, it's going to be for uh, for nails, um, but they're tiny and small. These ones don't last as long as I want, but they were like five, five or six cents a piece, and I got them by I think I bought a hundred of them. So uh, they're great for um, for again non marring uh, material removal, uh, and it gets the, the 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 wood roughly finished. You know, it's still 100 grit. It's not like the best ever. <clears throat> so then I switch over to one of these white ones, um, which is a higher grit. This is about 240 grit. Um, and it takes off very little material, but again, it smooths it out to a really nice, uh, smooth finish, and it doesn't mar the surface, um, which is really important when you're working with something that's so easily marred like wood. And then my favorite, definitely my favorite, is this two, uh, this three twenty, um, this three twenty grit foam uh, block. These were a little bit more expensive because they're not as widely available. I had to buy these from the states. So, and since we're located in Canada. Uh, there were some import fees and that kind of thing. So these ended up being about 50 cents a piece. But luckily, you don't use these a lot. Um, so I just use these to finish up uh, the surface. Uh, if I, I, I can really tell if there's any more work I need to go back to like get rid of the more scratches or that kind of thing. Um, once that's done, I switch over to some 600 grit paper, which some people say it's a little too much, but uh, I really like going that extra step. And then once that's done, I take uh, some steel wool, uh, some triple zero steel wool, and then go over the entire surface and preps it. Um, and then I blow it off with some compressed air, uh, and then it's off to paint. So um, as you can tell, this is this is quite highly finished, and it's very it's using all the same techniques that I've uh, that just described here. And, and this portion right here was actually made. Um, with this just slowly taking away that material and then giving that nice crisp edge but yet um, using the foam block here I'm able to cut that edge down so it doesn't dig into your hand you know that's that's the way it should be um, and I can switch over to this aluminum one <clears throat> it was done with the same techniques this palm swell um, and this is uh, spalted maple um, walnut and uh, olive on the back so these were these were made off the handle, off the slingshot, and the words are sculpted and uh, finished the same way as this this scarlet beetle here. This is the church remore. So um, that's that's kind of why I just wanted to show because these, these these aren't they're widely available. These aren't it's nothing like a secret or anything. Um, I like using them because they're cheap, they're effective, and uh, they're a little bit easier to work with than sandpaper because I find sandpaper I'm getting I'm missing edges and I'm not giving an overall. Um, yeah, things. This is a more systematic approach to it, and I really like going through that that process every time I make a slingshot. So, um, yeah, that's what I wanted to share. Uh, again, I'm looking at the time, and it's eight minutes. So, uh, thanks for listening to me talk about sanding implements. Okay, talk to you soon.